position. So did you. Well, but you changed the yeah. in the book. <laughs> so did you, Mark? Go. You wrote a book where you changed their position from no. The, you you wrote a book where you changed their position from a path to citizenship to a path to legalization. And the bottom line is this. We are not going to be able to do anything on this issue until we first bring illegal immigration under control. The American people have been told for 30 years they're going to enforce the border, they're going to build the wall, and it never gets built, and it never happens. It is very clear there will be no progress on this issue in any way, shape, or form until you prove to the people of this country that illegal immigration is under control, and when I'm president, we are going to bring it under control once and for all after 30 years of talking about it. Marco, Marco, you brought up my name. I have supported a consensus approach to solving this problem wherever it came up. And then 2007, it almost passed month when my brother was president of the United States. A bipartisan approach got close. Barack Obama actually had the poison pill to, to stop it then. And when you led the charge with the gang of eight, I supported it because you asked me to. I think it's important for people in elected office to try to forge consensus to solve problems. There's never going to be a perfect bill. But, but when you didn't do that, and you ask people to support, you shouldn't cut and run. But Megan, you should you stick with it. And that's won't. exactly what happened. He cut and run, and that's a, that's a tragedy, but because Megan, now it's harder and harder to Brian, actually this solve this problem. Point. There's not going to be any consensus on this issue until we enforce our immigration law. Hey, that is abundantly that. clear. Vote now, you that. are not going to be able to ram down the throat of the American people your approach. The only way we're going to be able to move forward after two migratory crises with minors, after two unconstitutional executive orders, the only way forward on this issue is to first bring illegal immigration under control. And until that happens, there's not going to be any consensus okay. on this issue. Let's move on. Senator Cruz. When Senator Rubio proposed that bill, creating a path to citizenship, you proposed an amendment. Mm -hmm. It would have allowed for legalization, but not citizenship. Yes, it would. Press last month on why you supported legalization, you claimed that you didn't, right, like you just did. I saw that. You argued that this was just a poison pill amendment, basically something designed to kill the bill and not actually get it through. But that is not, however, how it sounded at the time. Watch. This bill to be voted down. I don't want immigration reform to fail. I want immigration reform to pass. I believe if this amendment were to pass, the chances of this bill passing into law would increase dramatically. I believe if the amendments I introduced were adopted that the bill would pass. And, and my effort in introducing them was to find a solution that reflected common ground and that fixed the problem. If the proponents of this bill actually demonstrate a commitment not to politics, not to campaigning all the time, but to actually fixing this problem, to finding a middle ground that would fix the problem and also allow for those 11 million people who are here illegally a legal status with citizenship off the table. Was that all an act? It was pretty convincing. You know, the amendment you're talking about is one sentence. It's 38 words. Anyone can go online at techcruise.org and read exactly what it said. In those 38 words, it said anyone here illegally is permanently ineligible for citizenship. It didn't say a word about legalization. But the bill allowed both. The bill you were amending allowed citizenship but, and legalization. But, Megan, the bill was a thousand pages. I introduced a series of amendments, each designed to fix problems in the bill. The fact that each amendment didn't fix every problem didn't mean that I supported the rest of the bill. And I'll tell you who supported my amendment. Jeff Sessions, the strongest opponent of amnesty in the United States Congress, and he did so because taking citizenship off the table was important and it revealed the hypocrisy of the, the proponents of this bill who were looking for votes. Listen, we can solve immigration. We just heard an argument back and forth that we can't solve immigration. I have a detailed immigration plan that is on my website, tedcruz.org. It was designed with Iowa's own Congressman Steve King and Jeff Sessions. And we have the tools in federal law to do this now. We can build the fence, we can triple the border patrol, we can end sanctuary cities by cutting off funding to them, we can end welfare for those here illegally, and what is missing is the political will, because too many Democrats and sadly too many Republicans don't want to solve this problem. If I am elected president, we will secure the border yes, and we will end illegal immigration. Senator Paul, you know how Washington works. Do you buy that? I was there and I saw the debate. I saw Ted Cruz say, we'll take citizenship off the table, 
and then the bill will pass, and I'm for the bill. The bill would involve legalization. He can't have it both ways. But what is particularly insulting, though, is that he is the king of saying, oh, you're for amnesty. Everybody's for amnesty except for Ted Cruz. But it's a falseness, and that's an authenticity problem, that everybody he knows is not as perfect as him because we're all for amnesty. I was for legalization. I think, frankly, if you have border security, you can have legalization. So was Ted, but now he says it wasn't so. That's not true. Go ahead, sir. famously said, facts are stubborn things. The facts are very, very simple. When that battle was waged, my friend Senator Rubio chose to stand with Barack Obama and Harry Reid and Chuck Schumer and support amnesty. And I stood alongside Jeff Sessions and Steve King and we led the fight against amnesty. And if you want to know who's telling the truth, you should look and ask people like Jeff Sessions and Steve King and Rush Limbaugh and Mark Levin, all of whom say, as Jeff Sessions said, responding to these false attacks just recently in Alabama, he said, if it wasn't for Ted Cruz, the Gang of Eight Rubio Schumer bill would have passed, but because Ted stood up and helped lead the effort, millions rose up to kill him. Schumer, your co-sponsor of that yeah, bill, agrees with Ted Cruz on this. I understand, but let me respond. I was mentioned on this in this answer, and so I'm going to respond on it this way. This is the lie that Ted's campaign is built on, and Rand touched upon it, that he's the most conservative guy, and everyone else is a, you know, everyone else is a rhino. The truth is, Ted, throughout this campaign, you've been willing to say or do anything in order to get votes. Ted, you work for George W. Bush's campaign. You, you, you helped design George W. Bush's. You helped design George W. Bush's immigration policy. And then when you got to the Senate, you did an interview with CBS News that wasn't even part of the video where you said on the issue of people that are here illegally, we can reach a compromise. And then in the committee, you said, I want to bring people out of the shadows. Now you want to trump Trump on immigration. But you can't, we're not going to beat Hillary Clinton with someone who's willing to say or do anything to win an election. Go ahead, Senator Cruz. You know, I like Marco. He's very charming. He's very smooth. But the facts are simple. When he ran for election in the state of Florida, he told the people of Florida, if you elect me, I will lead the fight against amnesty. When I ran in Texas, I told the people of Texas, if you elect me, I will lead the fight against amnesty. We both made the identical promises. But when we came to Washington, we made a different choice. Marco made the choice to go the direction of the major donors to support amnesty because he thought it was politically advantageous. I honored my commitments, and as president, I will honor every commitment that I make to the men and women of this country. Go ahead, Governor Christie. I, I want to ask the, the people in the audience. Like, I'm standing here. I, I watched the video of Senator Cruz. I watched this, the video of Senator Rubio. I heard what they said. And this is why you need to send someone from outside of Washington to Washington. I feel like, I feel like I need, I feel like I need a Washington to English dictionary converter, right? I mean, I heard what they both said. I saw it on the video. And the fact is, this is what makes a difference when you're a governor. You can change your mind. Ted could change his mind. Marco could change his mind. It's perfectly legal in this country to change your mind. But when you're a governor, you have to admit it. You can't hide behind parliamentary tricks. That's the difference, and that's the kind of leader we need in the White House. Stop the Washington Bull, and let's get things done. Okay.